You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk, 1150 AM. Now, back to the show with local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell. You are listening to The Money Hour at 1150 AM, KKNW, the Saturday, August 27th show. You can also listen to my podcast, Facebook premiere, or you can catch my show on my show YouTube channel. In addition, for more information on my upcoming community outreach events, please go to tinamitchellevents.com. I am your host and local mortgage expert. I bring into studio each week the best of the best experts in our local market on everything regarding your money. And in studio right now, I have Cynthia Kaiser of Kaiser Advisors LLC to discuss a Effective communication right here on 1150 AM KKNW. Uh, Cynthia, again, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Tina. It's a pleasure to be here today. Yeah, and excited about our uh, conversation about communication. So how do you help your clients save time and money with successful business relationships? Sometimes it's not necessarily what you say, it's how you say it. And there are ways to deliver your message so succinctly that your receiver is going to receive it positively. And I have worked with lawyers for over 25 years and they are so busy trying to be perfect. Same with doctors or other professional services. They spend so much of their time trying to be perfect that they either don't have the bandwidth to take the time to figure out how to say it properly Mm. in order to get effective results, or they have some historical triggers, could be trauma, could be anxiety, could be anything regarding or surrounding attachment and conflict styles, which I'm sure we'll get into, but that's That's the other end. And so I help people recognize that, that helps them communicate more effectively, that keeps clients. Yes. And it brings in new clients. Yeah. And if you're, if you say that you don't have time to master something as important as communication, you need to make the time because overall you're, it's costing you a lot more time, a lot more money, and even more importantly, emotional stress and energy for not getting the results that you want. And ultimately everybody is here in business and in life to maximize results and to be able to maximize uh, the end game in anything that you're doing. And it all lies in communication. I always say, if you're not getting the results that you want, it is almost always in how you're delivering that message. And sometimes it's just an adjustment of a couple words in that messaging. Or again, like Cynthia says, um, and how you're delivering that, I'm sure tonality is a big part of it as well. So Cynthia, how do you navigate your clients through troubled uh, communication with family members, uh, maybe spouse, significant others, siblings, uh, parents. I really prefer, I, I, as I say, I'm the step before a marriage and family counselor or therapist. I am not a therapist. I have a master's in communication. And it's really about uh, correcting and modifying the communication behavior between the dyad rather than making one party feel really good. It's really not about about therapy with one or other of the party. It's really about how they communicate together. So oftentimes one will say to me, well, I want to work with you, but my husband won't. Okay, well, that is not going to do us any good. Yeah. I can work with you in the beginning, but it's going to take both of you because he said, she said, happens literally with the rise and, and set of the sun. Yeah. Uh, every single day and with every single person. And so, and so a way to navigate through that so people understand that in order to get without under the manipulation guys, there is a way to go in soft in order to really have your recipient, whoever that is, whether it's a business partner or your husband or wife or your child mm-hmm. or your husband's stepchild. All of that takes the same tools. Yeah. And and that's what and that's what is so so fun. It's the same tools, no matter yeah. what, no matter what relationship you have. 
Absolutely. I follow three things, love, acceptance, and accountability. I need to come from a place of honestly, uh, a loving place, acceptance of who they are, what space that they're in, regardless of what that is. And then I need to be accountable, accountable for how I'm going to react. The exception to that is an abusive scenario, but you know, it, it always comes back to the accountability piece because how you're going to react and what you're bringing into that conversation is going to determine the outcome of that conversation. So you can be the bigger uh, person in that process. So Cynthia, what if you have people that you love, but can't handle discussing difficult situations um, because you can't ignore them. You have right. to address them. So how do you, you help have to have people me. that you have to have you exactly? So how are so, you? Oh, uh, so, so first, the first three words, you said three words, you know how I am. I always have to have three words. So my three words that I go through with every client is accurate, appropriate, and respectful uh-huh accurate don't you know it's you always don't do the dishes no no no. you always talk to the secretaries that way no 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 mm-hmm. or you never call that client back on time probably not never uh-huh. so there are things that so when there's something really hard to say like i love you but i am no longer willing to do that with you in our bedroom quarters yeah. How do you say that? And it's based on the trauma that I have recently figured out happened to me when I was seven. And so now I'm realizing that in order to um, effect better communication within my relationship with you, I can no longer do that. Yeah. Well, any way that you say that, much like you would say, I'm sorry, you have cancer, there are words and there are ways and there are tones mm-hmm. that you can adopt to go in soft and get your communication heard. Yeah, and that's really great, Cynthia. And I, I, you know, I'm, I, I like what you said in, you know, the three words and um, that there's a, a simple template that I'm sure that you shared through the process that really is a plug and play, no matter what conversation that you're having, you just need to learn the skills in order to be mastering, to master communication. And again, if you're not doing it for anyone else but yourself, because you're in the place that you need to be your best for yourself, which we do, it's going to ultimately um, benefit everybody else around you, right? Yes, I, I have two things to say. One, a whole segment of my of what I do is internal communication. If you can't speak well to yourself so that yes. your self hears you, you aren't going to be um, effective with anybody else. And I, I prefer to work with the dyads, like I said, or the family. I have seven people on the Zoom sometimes. It's fascinating. But um, I only only allow individuals to work with me when I see a theme, when I see a theme of disruptive communication behavior in their work life, in their home life, in their social life, in their family life, with the gentleman at Target that will not return their item without a receipt. All of those people, that same funnel of the way that this person is communicating, I can modify that behavior. Yes, that's the, that's the out of the box consideration of working with individuals when they see a, a, a trend or they're constantly saying to their best friend, I don't know why he or she won't stay longer than two months. Well, mm-hmm. since- Yes. Yeah. So Cynthia, if you have a stressful workplace because of lack of positive communication from managers, owners, um, your teammates, I mean, it's really challenging when you feel that you don't have control over others and especially if those others are at a higher level in the chain. So how do you consult people in that when things just around them are not positive from everybody else? Okay, so I listened to Colin Powell speak a long time ago, and he said something to me that stuck with me. He said, if, if you're a leader and you have a high productive person on your team, but that high productive person is exhibiting extremely poor communication behavior, whether that is over delegating or dehumanizing or, you know, pip from A to Z. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, disruptive communication behavior. If you allow that to continue in order to improve the bottom line and increase revenue and all boats float to the top, 
you are doing a disservice to yourself and the entire company. Yeah. So you must be able to um, speak up and, you know, you are the mama or papa bear. If you are non-binary bear, no offense to anybody. Mm -hmm. And you run your show and you are responsible for all of those. And if you have a, if you have a high producing person who needs because of their attachment style, their four adult attachment styles, and you recognize that that person needs a little more handholding or that person needs a little more of this or that person needs in the way that you communicate with them, then it behooves you to do it. Yeah. So, but what if you are uh, down at the lower chain in the command okay. and, everybody and, staff. Above, and everybody above you, your leaders and your managers are not positive uh -huh. and they have a really low level of communication. How do you navigate? Would you say that's a bad environment and you need to get out? No. Or no, it's how always... do you let them navigate to get better results from those negative people? Okay, so I just had this, and it was actually through BNI, what I call speed dating, you know that. Yeah. And she, she was in somewhere in Texas, and she's a young um, uh, Latino woman, and she uh, works for an even younger um, white woman in a, in, in a lawyer, in a lawyer, and she, and she is upper management, but it is not of the lawyer, uh, caliber and she is not mm -hmm. level. So it's not of the same. Yep. And, and because, you know, this, this, this woman, her boss is younger and a little condescending and there's some, uh, diversity issues. And there are some cultural issues with being a Latina woman and being raised in an environment where you don't speak up yeah and now you have to speak up to someone who is diverse from you and also younger than you and in the power to fire you yeah there is a way that you come at it from a very humble and respectful place and yet also mandating respect onto yourself yeah case by case basis and I gave her in that case by case I gave her very specific words to say things like I'm honored to be part of this mm -hmm. professional environment with you I am humbled by all that you bring to the table and then you softly go and then you and then you go in with the soft yeah. this is what I could use in order to be able to maximize to give you my best Right. And, yeah, so and increase your revenue. That's why I'm here. These are the tools I need in order to provide better service to you. Yes. Right. Yeah. And that's great, Cynthia, that, you know, really on a one-on-one -on -one basis, somebody can come to you and you can actually give them the words, um, have them say those words so you can go through that role playing and help them with the uh, the emotional and make sure that it's they're practicing in that authentic way because really it it can take just one convert one right conversation uh for you to to start that snowball effect or it can take one bad conversation that's going to have a ripple effect downwards that's going to be devastating uh, for everyone involved. So what a great uh, service that you're bringing in on communication, because I think that is, is probably uh, the biggest thing in uh, roadblocks and challenges in life and business is not understanding how to communicate and adapt your communication style in order to get the results that you want so you can be your best for someone else. Right. And, and what I provide for my clients when they know that there is going to be, be a stressful situation or interaction or conflict, which they're attempting to resolve, I, I provide some scenarios. So I say, okay, you're going to say A, mm -hmm. and this is going to come up with B. Yes. Then I give you a response for B. Yeah. If that person comes up with C, yep. I'm going to give you a response for C. And I give several um, available uh, paths in, uh, because I don't know because sure. I'm not part of that dyad conversation. So I have to offer up some potentials. Mm -hmm. so that they if they don't get exactly what they need, they're, they're yeah. not, you know a deer in headlights saying, "Well, now what do I do?" Absolutely. I I try and offer that as well. Yeah, that's great, Cynthia. So what are tips that you have to creating and sustaining business relationships when you're finding it's difficult to do that? 
Well, uh, I have uh, three go-tos. The first one is avoid always and never. It's just better. John Gottman said it from the Gottman Institute, and I learned it a long time ago. Just don't do it. It's just better not to, because really, really, it's, it's probably not accurate, and accurate are one of my three words. Uh, another thing is um, it, you're never 100% right. You're also never 100% wrong, but you, you're never 100% right. We all bring in baggage. We all bring in historical Rolodexing. We all bring in things that determine and filter how we communicate and how we perceive it. Mm -hmm. So having a finite sense of what that looks like and, you know, keep yourself on that path that way. Um, and, and realize that mm, it's the hardest thing. What did I bring into this? It's the hardest thing. And the mo and people feel very weak um, when they're doing it. And it's really strength that is yeah. the vulnerability that provides that strength. Yeah. Also, when, when, well, I'm going to give you four. When you are most, most upset, whether it's professional or personal, and you are most wanting to just mm, bash the best thing to say, and people are listening are just going to want to go throw up, but really, the best thing to say is, what do you need from me right now? Yeah. yeah. It's huge. And the last thing I can say is, do not try to navigate through conflict when you are drinking or otherwise. In of your course. Yes. No, you wouldn't you even believe. You wouldn't yeah. believe how many people get liquid courage or other kind of courage uh -huh. before, you know, in. And that's while the filter is off, the wrong filter is off. Yeah. 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 Good, good point. So if you lose clients after a period of time without being given a substantial explanation, uh, obviously there's some issue if you're having that on a regular basis. How do you help your clients navigate through that? The toughest thing is to do a client interview and then not take the advice. Mm -hmm. Ask the question. It's worse to ask the question and then not do it than not ask the question. So if you're going to sit down and you're going to say to the client, what is it that you like? What is it that you don't like? And how can I make our experience better? If you're willing to do that and be candid about your efforts to revise those issues. Yeah that is positive communication behavior. But it, it really takes wanting to change the course of communication within the relationship. It's hard. Conflict styles, there are five of them. They're much more liable than attachment styles, but they really, if you avoid and you just run away from everything, that's going to be tough for you. If you combat and you come at it with everything, that's going to be tough with you. If you accommodate and just say, okay, whatever, you win. How many marriages do you know go south that way? And <clears throat> from a compromising, I'll give a little and you give a little. You take top half the carrot, I'll take the bottom and the half of the carrot. Well, you're, you've got bottom of the carrot. So what does that mean exactly? So yeah. the best way to navigate through conflict is collaborative. It takes longer. It means more. Yeah. It feels badly. <laughs> it yeah. feels raw, but it's worth the effort. Anything um, that is mastered at the highest level, it takes more time. It takes taking the hard road, taking a step back, learning new techniques and new tools, um, and creating a different habit for yourself to where you're willing to learn different communication styles. Uh, Cynthia, I think what you're uh, doing is amazing. And um, really quickly, the best way to contact you? Uh, you can go to my website, kaiseradvisors.com. Uh, you can schedule a free consult with me, press the button. My office telephone number is there. It's the easiest way to find me. Wonderful. Well, Cynthia, thank you so much for coming back in studio. It was great to have a conversation with you and thank to you share so uh, your tips on communication. My pleasure as always, Tina. 